live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2020. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back everyone. It's Cube's live coverage from Barcelona, Spain. We're here for Cisco Live 2020, it's the Cube's coverage. I'm John Furrier with my co Stu Miniman. This has been four days of coverage. We've got another day tomorrow. A lot of action around application developers and programmable infrastructure, and really at the heart of this is hybrid cloud and multi-cloud, which is the future of where the enterprises are going, and really at the, at the center of it is the suppliers, the cloud service providers, obviously Cisco Power. I've got two great guests, and Cube alumni, David Cope, Senior Director of Cloud Business Development at Cisco, and Benjamin LaPlane, EMEA, Chief Product Officer of 3DS, Outscale. Uh, guys, welcome back, good to see you again. Thank you, Thanks for coming to be on. here. Uh, Benjamin, we talked uh, two years ago here, I think it was one of the early days when we started publicly riffing on the notion of cloud service providers going to start to be really more instrumental in how enterprises will deploy and manage workloads and applications. So we were right. Yeah. It turns out <laughs> we were right. And we, we went actually even, uh, even further than that. Is, um, so now Outscale is not only a public cloud provider, or now we also have an on-prem uh, solution, so you can, uh, we can deploy our stacks uh, on your prem with uh, hardware, software, and services. And uh, we actually uh, start building locally compliant uh, stacks. So in France, we actually got the second cloud certification for the French government, and we are also working for the ITAR and Federal certification for the US. Great, take a minute to give an update on the business. You just had an acquisition, you're now part of a different company. Explain that and the relationship to the bigger company. So, um, Outscale was actually founded in 2010, and uh, we actually started to provide public cloud services starting 2012, something like this. And uh, Dassault System was always one of our big customers. Um, they were actually transforming themselves from being uh, a software vendor to a software as a service company, which is a huge move for a company this size. And we are actually supporting them uh, going this direction. And uh, they felt that they needed uh, to, inter to have an internal support uh, for cloud services uh, uh, within the group. So they are, we are actually part of the family now. Well, congratulations, but I think this trusts the larger trend. David, we talked about how cloud service right, are going to be merge, uh, merging as more of a focal point. The global system integrators are already doing it. This right. is a tell sign for how enterprises, large enterprises, are going to start to be thinking. They need people to support them right. with multiple, their own stacks, their own in-house teams supporting right. these new workloads. What's your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I think these guys are a great example of sort of the evolution we've seen with the cloud. I think EC2 came out of beta in 2008 or something like that, and, and since then we've seen cloud go through sort of skepticism, experimentation, debate about private versus public, but today I think both desires and also tools have enabled companies to start focusing just on their business and realize now they can place and manage workloads wherever their business priorities drive them, not IT constraints. Oh, yeah. And so you can get the best of both worlds. You can support this agility uh, and yet you can also start to manage governance and policies across these very different private and public environments. Benjamin, can you bring us a little bit inside the, your really hybrid solution you're helping with customers? Uh, we've had many years looking at this. Uh, you've seen some providers say, oh, we're going to help put a stack on your environment. But if you let IT touch it, oh, well, I need to adjust something or make a yeah. change, and then, you know, if you're helping manage it, oh, wait, you're, you're out of compliance, you've done something yeah, different. Exactly. From an application standpoint, uh, we have seen, I, I, you know, I might have my monolith in my data center, I have microservices in the public cloud, uh, or you know, in, in, in your service provider, there, it makes sense to do that, but help us understand kind of what goes where, who manages what, and what's really happening for your customers. So uh, we try to come in with a very simple approach where basically the, um, the perimeter of responsibility is the same everywhere you go. So whether you're on-prem or in public cloud, you should still focus on your application and your area of expertise as a company and being able to deliver to your customers. And um, so we just want to make sure that for, custom, for our customers, it's very easy to say, okay, it's not because I'm on-prem, then I need to do IT jobs, I still need to manage applications. And um, since Outscale is actually providing both public cloud and on-prem solution, 
we want to provide it with as much isolation, isolation as possible. And that's one of the reasons why healthcare actually uh, was integrated within Cisco Cloud Center. So we can actually leverage uh, um, the, the governance across the board, the, the homogeneity of, of deplo application deployment, whatever, wherever you are. And it's exactly the same thing for the customer. You don't have to sacrifice anything because you're on-prem or you're on the public cloud. So what specifically about Cisco is driving that? Because you said a couple things that got my attention. One is, you're providing a platform so the apps can work anywhere. I heard you kind of tease at that. Is that one of the things that Cisco's bringing to the table? What's the, what's the Cisco value there? For me, it's, um, we, I mean, uh, it's been like 40 years that Cisco is around and they always uh, uh, worked uh, to actually bring bridges between platforms, between solutions, between companies. And I feel that's exactly why we're actually using the solution. So it's a different bridge, it's not a network bridge for this one, it's more a, an application bridge or uh, I would say a, a pipeline application bridge. And that, that's where we actually find the value for us. I want to get your thoughts real quick, go off a tangent a little bit on, on the operating model of cloud, because we were riffing on this two years ago. This is now the big conversation here. Hybrid really is all about having that operating model, whether it's on public or on premises. How do you guys serving your customers when you have an app? Hey, I got an app, I just want to build my app. I don't care where it is, I'm, and I have my operations going to be seamless across. I, how are you implementing that? To be honest, I don't feel like it's, it's uh, we are still, we are not there yet. I feel uh, uh, companies still struggle to actually uh, build an app, being able to deploy whatever the tenants they choose, whether it's going to be a public cloud provider or an American one, or a European one, or even a Chinese one now and uh, all on-prem. And since the stacks are always different, they always have to pay for the difference between this platform on their side. Okay. And I feel like well, the tools are actually helping these companies. So it's not actually the cloud providers making the effort, it's usually the tools and the ecosystem around these providers are actually providing uh, more tools and more solutions. So it's, it's easier uh, for the companies that actually manage the application at the end. Yeah. David, maybe you can help us dig in a little bit to sure. the management and the software that Cisco's uh, working on and delivering here to help with these type of environments. Yeah, you know, the way I look at the world is, is businesses have applications, applications run on infrastructure, and the state of the industry today is you should no longer care about where that application is running. It's just infrastructure. It's in my data center, it's in somebody else's data center called a cloud. So the state of the, the business today is how do I create sort of a declarative model which describes my application independent of having to know the nuances of each of the endpoints and then be able to manage the entire life cycle from optimizing cost, performance, placement, and then the ongoing policy-based governance. And for us, that management platform is Cloud Center, which is a cloud management platform. There's others in the industry that take a similar approach, but that really is where this blurring of data centers and clouds supporting any apps uh, is, is occurring. Yeah. Pedro, what's some of the workloads that you guys are working on? Give some uh, anecdotal feedback on some of the day-to-day -day things you're working on. Is it on-premise driving the action? Is it the app developers, your customers? Because you have, you're serving multiple, a big company, right? Yeah, um, from what I've seen is uh, we have had a lot of traction on on-prem solution because uh, historically it's been uh, usual stacks which are kind of usually lack of usability for the customers. Um, um, they are now used to use it the, to the public cloud, the features, the capabilities, the agility, yeah. and then when you go by, you're going back on-prem, you, you, you feel like you're traveling time back, backwards. Yeah. And that's, that's usually an issue. Uh, with our solution where uh, we don't change the level of responsibility of the customer, so it doesn't have to have uh, data center people, or operation people, it's still the same guys that were actually uh, working the, into uh, the public cloud and they're going to operate exactly the same way on-prem. So that's a huge promise for, this, for these companies. And you're implementing that right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah actually. Great. So we, we deployed uh, one like the beginning of this year, two last year, and it's going to continue to grow, uh, specifically with a Dassault system company uh, as a business firm. So I got to ask you as an expert, the nirvana, the holy grail, or whatever word we want to use, is to have applications just completely have programmable infrastructure. That's the DevOps you know, holy grail. We're getting there. Yeah. Where are we in your mind? How far do we have to go to get the app developers just coding away and the progress of innovation? What's your thoughts on where the industry is and what we're dealing with here? I think you can already do it if you sacrifice uh, a part of your freedom or your, a part of your portability. We can find tools that actually working pretty well which is with each other. 
but one terrain you're going to be in for uh, at once. The issue is more uh, how it's going to become a, a more standardized way to actually work for both company, and that means also for us providers to provide kind of the same level of interface and the same way to work. So the company and I mean so apart from cloud center, like the application are actually being able to uh, work across infrastructure platforms, whatever they are. I mean cloud center for the cross platform work. Yeah, yeah, so Cloud is one of these tools that actually kind of uh, uh, leverage different platforms and, and don't really care, and as a user, you don't really care about the difference you can deploy, whether it's going to be on VMware, on public cloud, and you don't expect the same level of capability in terms of infrastructure, but still, you still deploy exactly the same pipelines, the same workloads, exactly the same way. One way to think about it, whether it's, whether it's Dassault managing all of its operating divisions or whether it's IT ops trying to manage its developers, is there's this sort of natural some usually unspoken tension yeah, where I, IT ops wants to support the agility that developers are looking for and business units are looking for, but at the same time IT ops is torn because they have to ensure governance and security and all that. So today, I think with these new platforms, you do a little bit of judo, frankly, is you allow developers or operating units to use the environment or tools of choice, but you still have these new cloud management platforms that allow you to apply and enforce governance. And those policies can either be exposed to them or it can be hidden from them. You get to choose. Well, that's the choice is key and the policy means automation. Yes. When you get the policies right. nailed down, the business logic, you get automation. Exactly. Which is the holy, which is even better. Which I'm psyched to see more of that. But I got to ask you guys, I stopped at your Cisco booth, your multi-cloud booth, yep. which by the way, I love the demos over there. You get all the Cisco service provider, everything else, but you guys got a multi cloud section. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's a lot of Kubernetes being discussed there. So Benjamin, I got to get your take on this because Stu and I always joke, the joke is just throw containers around and you can, you can do anything. You're dealing with a lot of on-premises legacy and enterprise stuff. Kubernetes and as service meshes come down the pike and microservices, that seems to be really a great way to deal with it. How are you looking at that? What's your vision and how, what are some of the practitioner uh, tools that are out there? What's your view on that? For me, the appeal of Kubernetes for, uh, for the, the, the customers is uh, less a, a way to work than the fact that it actually is, is a standard. So we are talking about the fact that wherever you are, you're always uh, having different API calls, uh, different way to authenticate yourself, different pol uh, policy management, and I feel that the appeal of Kubernetes is yeah, that you can use it over any cloud platform in the world, and it always feels the same, it always behaves the same way. And it's kind of the, the promise, the, 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 the same promise that you can get with containers, but you get it on the orchestration layer of these containers. Uh, and, and I feel that that's why people are quite rushing into it, it's because they feel that if it doesn't work there, then it might work somewhere else. So How are you it, dealing with some of these enterprise applications? What do you guys do? Um, so uh, the, the interest for us is so we just we provide uh, the control plane or the, the master nodes, and usually customers still manage the resources or the, the resource pool uh, on which they're going to deploy containers and whatever. We we still uh, manage mostly VMs and, and block storage, so the, the the basic breaks of any uh, infrastructure as a service provider. And, um, and the customers start from there and actually build their application. And they can even uh, reuse things that have been done somewhere else uh, in any other cloud platform. David, talk about um, the Cisco vision here because I think you guys have been seeing this now. Obviously, multi is kind of a future state. We, that's obviously everyone has multi clouds now, but hybrid is where the action is. Yeah. And this, by getting this common operating model, with, you got these Kubernetes trends and things coming down the pipe with microservices, that yeah. really is impacting the momentum how do you guys see yeah. that? What's your position on this? No, I think you're right. I mean, when you look at Kubernetes specifically, I think it's obviously maturing from just developer-centric activities now into production. Uh, most Kubernetes to date has been deployed on-prem or in the cloud, but now that's the foundation that's going to enable the future of hybrid workloads, where I can start, again, blurring the boundaries between data centers and clouds, develop on the cloud, prod on-prem, develop on-prem, access a service on the cloud, so we're just starting to see sort of these hybrid Kubernetes workflows, and Cisco has a container platform that's native Kubernetes, but we've also, it runs on-prem, but it's also optimized to work with public clouds that support Kubernetes. And so it really becomes a single environment, a pool of resources for the application. I think it sets the table nicely for the app developers of the future, because at the end of the day, soon it's just develop your app and 
yeah. let things go and happen. Yep. Um, Benjamin, final question while you're here. I want to get your expert opinion on this because I want to kind of go back to our 2018 and modernize our <laughs> chat a little bit around cloud service providers. Mm. Because I think this is still going to be the hottest area because I think you're, you're unique. You got acquired and you're still servicing a, a big customer base but you're now part of the mothership, I guess, um, which is good, you got a lot of work to do. But cloud service providers will still service a lot of customers. Yeah. And this is going to be a fast growing market. What's your advice for other cloud service providers out there that are really trying to understand how do I build my infrastructure? How do I deal with the clouds? Do I just go all in on one? Do I build my own? How do I service the on-premises? What's your advice? I think like, if your company uh, uh, main area of expertise is not IT, you shouldn't actually invest uh, in-house ITs. I think nowadays we, you, we, we have like, and I'm not talking only about our scale, but we have like a lot of different solutions, a lot of uh, technological partners such as Cisco and NetApp uh, that have a great solution that are actually proven. Uh, there is solution as ourselves also at scale. Um, so I, I, don't, I feel like anything that you do try to build from, from the ground uh, would have a huge disadvantage in terms of, of time, of technology. Um, and again, for any other cloud provider, I think also we're going to see kind of the separation we're talking about in 2018 is still going to continue to exist and I think it's going to even increase where we're going to see um, local compliance and great regulation that actually for the past two years uh, dramatically increased in terms of, of strengths and numbers. And, uh, and, that, and I feel like the approach of multi-local cloud as, as we've, we've been pushing for the past 10 years within our scale, and it makes see, even more sense. Do you see specialty clouds emerging fast or, or building on say Amazon, Google, or other clouds, or what do you see? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I even think that the, the big three uh, in the US are, are even starting to find their own place, which is not the same. And I think we're going to see the same thing with, uh, with the Chinese and reopen actors as well. Awesome. Benjamin, great to have you on. Great to have your insight from the field, appreciate it. Yeah. David, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Appreciate that insight from Cisco as well. It's theCUBE coverage, day three of our four days of coverage. I'm Sean Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more coverage from Barcelona after this short break.